Hello, uh, I'm Chris. Uh, I thought I would try and stream some old games because I've don't know, <laughs> felt like doing it. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is this is a Resident Freak show. There's there's sort of a lot of um, a backstory as to why I'm streaming this. Um, particular game. I think what I'll do, let me just get through the um, title screen. Uh, that's a little bit less distracting. Okay, so so the Residents are my favourite band. Uh, like they've always been my favourite band since, since I was a, like a kid. Um, um, and they are they were sort of a kind of avant-garde sort of I don't know what you'd call them really the music sort of all over the place it's that they, they, they um and they've been around for ages uh they're kind of famous for not like wearing masks on stage they were more sort of one of the first bands to do that, they, 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 their sort of most popular look was they had like these huge eyeball masks for heads and top hats, and um, which is what that image was at, at the beginning. Um, and in the 90s, I suppose, uh, <laughs> I should also have done some research before I did this, they, uh, they started experimenting, they'd always kind of experimented with video and different types of media and things and um i mean they are they are the the the, 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 the sort of the most pretentious kind of san francisco art band ever um which is why i'm kind of i don't know and something as a as a kid that really spoke to me for some reason and um uh i've kind of stuck with them i've seen them seen them twice uh and they've toured over here Saw them last year actually, and, and uh, yeah, they're always amazing. They're still going. Um, I guess they're all quite old now, but who knows? I mean, they could they could replace band members without you ever know. Anyway, uh, so yeah, in the nineties they experimented with uh, CD-ROM technology. Probably, I mean, I'm forty, so this was a big deal when I was a teenager, I suppose. Um, uh, I remember we you, the, we got a sort of a PC that we could play games on at, at the point that CD-ROM technology was really kicking off, and the games then were kind of obsessed with um, like formation video, and uh, there were games like Return to Zork was a, a classic. You know, there lots of kind of adventure games where they get sort of semi-famous actors in I mean th at times quite famous actors I mean the um, you know Dennis Hopper was in a few games and uh, there's is it Privateer with Clive Owen in although he wasn't really famous then but still like um, Christopher Walken was in some you know there were all these games with sort of um, Famous actors, but it was it was this weird kind of experimental time where people were trying to do what they could. Suddenly, you had this sort of extra disc space, which you had the CD, and you could put sort of um, do more things with music and graphics and things that that before you, you know you used to, oh God, I should, should just show my age. But you used to get games, and you'd get a big box, and it'd be full of just like. I think I remember Gabriel Knight, one of my favourite adventure games, it came on about 20 floppy disks and you'd sort of um, play it off these 20 floppy disks and you'd either keep, I think I think on the PC you could normally install the whole thing and just keep swapping the disks in the installation bit, but um, uh, anyway, CD-ROM to fix all that, but it also allowed for the, all this kind of weird experimentation. And also it was, it was before the point where we're at now where games are so sort of massive and the the expectation is so high that that kind of indie element it still exists there are still indie games but 
there's a bigger gap between the lower end single developer indie games and the huge AAA games with big companies working on them. Whereas I think at this point there were still sort of small studios of sort of you know 10, 15 people working on these things. Um, anyway, so the residents uh, moved into the CD-ROM area. A lot of bands were kind of experimenting with CD-ROMs. I think the Rolling Stones did one and. Um, Oh, I've asked the, a few others. I want to say Queen, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure that's right. But yeah, there were a few other, and most of those ones were kind of, um, you know, you could watch the music videos and there'd be some kind of game interface that they weren't really game games. They were sort of, I guess, what became websites now. You'd have all these things you could click on. Um, uh, but what the residents did was something really weird and experimental and a bit more gamey. So they did three of these. They did Freak Show, uh, Bad Day on the Midway and Gingerbread Man. Um, and I've got all three. The other two I haven't played before. This one uh, I've got a bit of history with. So I thought I'd start with this one first. Um, the So yeah, just to go into that, that sort of history. Um, the first time played this we were in london i grew up in stoke and trent so being in london was a was a big deal we went <laughs> went all often in london that seemed like a massive thing and we were staying there i think uh and oh there's it's going to be all kinds of things and i think it was the time we went for um a relative's wedding i, th I think it was that time and we didn't stay down there that often. Um, uh, one of my parents' friends was an MP, and we used to stay in her flat when she wasn't using it. Or well, once we did. <laughs> I guess I used to. I think that happened, like, once. Um, so I think it was that time. And, and it was the very early days of the internet. And the internet was still was sort of being talked about, but it wasn't really in homes that it wasn't sort of readily available um and it was something like my, my dad was really interested in the internet and there was this he'd heard about some sort of show uh some kind of expo or show that they were doing on the south bank and which just wasn't too far from where we were staying or we were going there that day or something um so we went to this show in the morning we sort of turned up at this place and it was really weird it was sort of I don't even know where it was. I mean, this was, oh, I, don't, I don't know how old it was, like 11, 12, quite, maybe a bit older, like 13, 14, but, the, you know, early teens. Um, and we, we sort of go to this place, and we went in, and there were these sort of important-looking people on desks at City. Well, that was actually, you know, they, I mean, I can remember exactly what they these people looked like they they were sort of looked like now i would say trendy tech guys but like um there was you know this was sort of um i think at the time i didn't really know what that was but they looked like they knew what they were doing and they're kind of setting up all these computers and things and we sort of wondered i remember the thing that we, we went there was a barrier set up and we couldn't work out what was going on there was no, the thing is, normally you walk into something like this and you expect someone to say, hey, we're not open yet, which is was the case, <laughs> or something, or like, what are you doing here, or can we help? No one said anything, no one looked up from their computers or anything, so we just kind of shuffled through this, we kind of moved the barrier aside and went in, and we were sort of, my dad was being quite obvious, like, like oh, is this it? Is this the internet thing? And what's going on? And you know, no one was responding. These, these sort of, there was a man and a woman there, and they both were kind of just busily doing stuff. And having actually having run sort of short film events, I kind of get that maybe they were just really busy setting up and um, whatever. Anyway, we're looking around, and there's this one computer set up on a wall, level like, this monitor on a wall there. It was, I remember, it was high up, and they had a mouse and. Um, and we were like, oh, it's the residents. And at this point, I was already like a huge residents fan. And it was my dad who got me into the residents. And 
so and and it wasn't like you know they weren't popular <laughs> it wasn't and still aren't really it wasn't like a thing you'd expect to see anywhere so suddenly being in this weird place in london and seeing the residents we were like what what is going on so uh and this screen was playing uh the residents freak show which was this cd rom which at the time i didn't know about so then so we started playing it and we got it was set up like this. It was exactly this screen with the tent and freak show written there. Or was it? No, 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 no. It must have been. It must have been the title screen because we wouldn't have known it was the residence yet. Anyway, <laughs> this is so long ago and my memory's uh, all over the place. Um, but yeah, so we knew it was the residence. We were like, excited. We were like, oh, I want to play this. And so we start playing it. In fact, I'll, I'll start actually doing it while we're here. So... Here we go. So you step forward towards the tent, and then let's go inside. We should get the guy coming over. I don't remember this. Don't remember the little guy jumping up and down. Most disturbing collection of human oddities. I'm Tex, your host and guide, and this is Mickey the Mumbling Midget. Mumble for the folks, Mickey. So yeah, so he's he's like the compare of the freak show, and there's the Mickey the Mumbling Midget. So <laughs> all good. Uh, yeah. So and then the thing I definitely remember we did is we went and saw the residents. So you can see they've got these various exhibitions, and there's a stage for the residents over there. Oh, we have to hear about um, the human mole first. Okay, so we're gonna skip. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> the tip broken then. Uh, right, so now I'm gonna skip Herman. I'm gonna go to the residence. Are these silly eyeball heads merely cover ups for much more hideous horrors beneath? Only the residents, stars of stage, screen, phonograph, and now CD ROM know for sure. <laughs> okay. So now we should be able to um, click on there. Oh, yeah, we can go forward. Uh, there are the residents. One of them uh, always wore, wore a skull because I think one of the eyeball heads got stolen once. So there were four eyeballs and then, um, yeah, anyway, that's that. Uh, yeah, and then I could watch it again or you can go or just get an egg timer because I think this is probably killing my PC. Uh, I'm going to send the human mole. We'll come back to him. I'm going to go back outside. Just because it's a bit quieter. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we did that. We watched the residents. And I was like, wow, the residents. And then um, the, the guy sitting up the computer behind us uh, suddenly said, we're, we're closed. <laughs> or we're not open yet. Um, and I was like, well, let's just ignore him, let's, let's, let's carry on, because <laughs> I wanted to see more of this. And then um, and then a dad went over and said, did you say you're not open yet? And he said, yes, we're not open. And he seemed a bit cross, and I was a bit like, well, no one's, we've been here for ages, no one, no one said anything. <laughs> and so we, so we left. And that was it. Right. And again, to take you back to that time, this was sort of pre-internet days, so there was no way of following up on this, really. So what that then turned into 
was me every time we went to um, a game shop or anything like that or like I went to a couple of games like or like software like fairs where people would bring their stuff and like all kinds of things uh, and it was also you know you had much more or what's well, many more kind of independent computer places and games shops and things like I remember we used to go into in, into Hanley into town uh, where we lived and there'd be a good sort of a run of like at least at least sort of three or four maybe even more shops that you go into looking for games like and you sort of go through see what was on the and you go in and see what was on the shelves and then you come out <laughs> sound like an old man it wasn't necessarily better I mean it was sort of obviously it's much easier now with the internet uh, just sort of clicking on things um, but yeah that was the thing that was so there was no way of following up on this there was no way of finding out like where this come from or, or what it was or like I didn't even know the origins of it um, until many 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 years later I think in I remember it must have been I don't think I got it when I was at uni I think I, fe- I got it on eBay in my tw- I was in my 20s so it would have been I think it was sort of post university um, and yeah found a copy on eBay and then got to finally experience the whole thing and by then I kind of you know you, the, the internet was more available so I could I had to find out a bit more about the the whole thing, uh, the whole sort of project, and that they'd had these other sort of CD-ROM things. Um, also, there was an album; they had an album to go with it as well, uh, which I'd got. So, um, yeah, it, it it it's that it's that thing where um, it was this huge mystery for a really long time, and. It was this thing that I was sort of constantly pursuing, and and then uh, you kind of get it, and it's amazing. Uh, but the mystery sort of gone, <laughs> and um, and it's uh, like I don't. I mean, I, who knows what anyone else? What what like a uh, anyone who wasn't playing CD-ROM games in the 90s and would make of this now is probably very dated and 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 also why would anyone want to spend time with this which is why I sort of thought I would try and stream it because it is this sort of oddity it's a sort of freak show in itself it's it's sort of something that doesn't really exist anymore and yet had value to me um, in a sort of artistic it's certainly an artistic value so um yeah i think i think i'll probably stop there i don't i know i know you've literally not done anything on this yet if that's i've only started but i don't want to make epic long three hour playthrough videos that no one will watch so that's that's consider this my sort of teaser it's just the introduction uh and the next time if i do another one of these we'll see how this one turns out uh, we'll, we'll actually go through and, and um, have a look at some of the uh, uh, displays. Uh, cool. Okay. If you are watching this, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not going to stay, stay safe because, ugh. but, um, you know, do what you're doing. <laughs> Be nice to each other. <laughs> Goodbye.